All right, welcome back to another Koenji Sean Reviews. And this, my fine friends, is an early look at Sakamoto Shinichi's newest release, DRCL, or Dracula Midnight Children Volume 1, based on Bram Stoker's Dracula book. And uh, today is Wednesday, the 16th of February, and this is not supposed to be out until Friday the 18th, but I got my hands on a copy early, so I wanted to do a quick flip through for you so that you can see it here first. Of course, Sakamoto Shinichi is famous for his Innocence series, or Inosan in Japanese. Um, recently, I picked up this. This is Eros times Fetishism, and it has some great, great Sakamoto artwork in it. So after picking this up, I was hellbent on picking up DRCL when it came out. Dracula. We'll just say Dracula from now on. There's a little bit of this. I actually do a full flip through of this on my Patreon page, Koenji Sean Reviews, if you're into it. But what I'm going to do here this evening, it's like, I don't know, 9.30 Japan time. Um... I'm going to do a flip through of DRCL first, and then I'll go through it again, covering all the details and spoilers and all the stuff. Yeah, all the details that uh, everyone wants. But uh, I don't want to give away too much in the beginning, so let's just take a look at what we have here in Volume 1. Um, Japanese bookstores are kind enough to wrap anything for you that you want wrapped, so I asked them to wrap it. And first off, this is really cool. So let's take off the obi. The obi is this. The obi is pretty dope. Sakamoto Shinichi Shinsaku, his newest release. And see all of this. Let's take off the obi. See all of the... Uh, Kind of wear and marks on here. I compared this to other copies and each copy was different. So I chose the one that I liked the most out of the stack that they had there. But that's cool how they varied the printing. And then the cover art, Lucy and Mina. So I've already read this. I got this this evening around, I don't know, six o'clock. It's nine o'clock now, ate some dinner, sat down, read it. And I have to say, I'm a big fan of old Bram Stoker's Dracula. Just, you know, kind of based on like my childhood and stuff. I was always a big vampire fan. You know, like that Fright Night stuff. You know, everyone loves Lost Boys. But any classic Dracula story is good in my book. It came with this free card. It's a thank you note from Shinichi Sakamoto, which is dope. So that's cool. I will be displaying that on my bookshelf. Color cover. Underneath the dust cover looks like this. Our main protagonist, she is a writer, as we can see here with her typewriter. And so I don't spoil it for all of you out there. I'm just going to kind of flip through this first for a minute. Then we'll go from beginning to end and I'll talk about what I read. And I got to say, I really enjoyed this. This is great. Great introduction to a Dracula story. But at any rate, let's look at some of the art. So this is, these are all the rules the vampire rules, which, you know, we all know, um, they come out at night, they don't go in the sun, um, they don't reflect in water or mirrors, they don't like crosses or holy water or the breath of God, um, to, you have to, you know, stab them in the heart, cut off their head, put garlic in their mouth. And anyone and anything can become a vampire despite sex, gender, 
That is a great two-page splash. On a ship at sea. So here I'm just flipping through some of my favorite panels to give you an idea of the artwork. And of course, Sakamoto is famous for his extreme detail and soft touch. Who could that be? Coated with violence, of course. I am intentionally not saying much because Again, I don't want to give away spoilers. We'll get into those in a minute. Very cartoony compared to everything previously, right? Cartoony, that's not really the right word. There are some fantastical and nearly psychedelic panels in here as well. Okay, I think I've kept this spoiler free as long as I can. Here, let me go towards the back here. Give you one last splash in your face. Eh, two. And here we have the back cover. Can I love I love this. I love that touch. All right, let's go through this bad boy. So if you're looking forward to reading it, um, either in Japanese or you're going to wait for the English translation, um, I'm sure there's psychos out there scanlating it online. But uh, at any rate, um, if you're planning on doing that, then you might want to turn this off now. But otherwise, let's go through and check out the story a little bit. So it starts off on... A uh, Russian ship traveling from uh, Varna to England. Uh, Varna and in, in uh, not Belgium. What do I want to say? Eastern Europe. Sorry, we'll get to that page. Um, at any rate, yeah, so there's on the ship, it's, it's, it's not very, there's not very many seamen on the ship. It's lightly staffed. Um, one guy goes missing and then this guy shows up and he's feeling a little bit sick. He's got moss growing out of his back, which is pretty dope. So there's this whole botanical twist to the story. Um, the ship that's carrying Dracula and these mysterious nine boxes of dirt, or seven or nine, I forget what it was, um, is also carrying a bunch of rare plants from Eastern Europe into England. So there is this weird bot botanical twist. They actually take a look inside the crates, the mysterious crates, and it's just stinky earth. It makes everyone puke.
And there's some fantastical stuff that happens too. A little bit of his blood drips on to the dirt and plants sprout up so we can see the beginnings of what is to come as far as some of these powers that uh, Dracula has. Uh, one person goes missing, another person gets the moss treatment. Everyone on board, which is like five other dudes, has to go investigate the cargo hold. Upon investigating, they find these nine boxes of dirt, which they open to investigate. Uh, kind of, we can see a shape of a hand in one of them. The captain's like, everyone, let's put these, everyone put these where I tell you to put them. And it forms a human shape. So we can imagine that's going to be Dracula. Here's our missing dude and our moss man coming in here. And basically everyone on the ship is fucked. I like this twist, how Dracula has these powers over plants. Something I haven't seen before, really, in a vampire tale. The detail and the lighting are just exquisite. Wow. And here we are in England. Whitby, Whitby, England. And this is also the location of a preparatory college where our main group of protagonists study. Her and them. Of course, they're having a picnic in a graveyard because what else are you going to, you know, where else are you going to have a picnic? Of course, she gets tricked and falls into a grave. Mina. The girls are Mina and Lucy, as I mentioned before. Mina is... An ardent feminist. I don't want to say feminist. She's just like, girls can do what boys can do. She took some boy's place at the school. You know, it's mostly a boy's college. Not a lot of girls there. Someone wrote in her book that, like, girls' brains are smaller than men's. Be gone. So there's this underlying kind of story about, like, men are better than women. No, women can be as good as men. I mean, it's a fucking college, dude. Of course. She should be fine and accepted. And uh, the ghost ship, because of course the crew has all been murdered by Dracula, uh, rolls into port. And when it rolls into port, a giant black dog, wolf type creature, exits the ship. But it has hands. It's so dope. Like I said, I mean, I love... I don't know, when it, I get into like retro Japanese horror, like vampires or like whatever, but a good Western vampire tale, eh, I can't get enough of it. You can see how badass this dog wolf creature is. Hybrid lynx. What do they call him? Come on, y'all. Someone tell me. Um, what's the word? Goddamn vampires versus wolfmen dudes. Starts with an L. Lichen. It's like a lichen type creature. This comes up a lot, the CACC. It's this, uh, it's, it has to do with wrestling. So she's badass. She can wrestle men and stuff because she wants to be equal to men. So she is study the ways of wrestling. I'm going to skip this part about one of the characters, Luke's, I think it's Luke's, uh, we don't know who she is, but she's chained up in a room, and she eats flies, and she's clearly maybe not a vampire, but something, like some sort of, uh, 
I don't know. She's waiting. She's waiting for the, the beast, the Dark Lord, to show himself. Here we have Mina wrestling a giant man called the Dragon. And, of course, she is going to take him out. But she's no superhero. That's what I like. She's just a regular schoolgirl. Trying to be as good as the boys or something like that. So everyone's at the graveyard, and this creature shows up, attacks Lucy. She's afraid of it until she sees it as human hands, and then she's like, I can wrestle any human. I am not scared of it. If it's human, I will take it on. And she attacks it. It turns into... I don't know what is that what is it turning into another dimension very coggle do we see it here maybe here ah and it turns into a bat and flies away as a vampire should. Skipping ahead here. Here we're back to... Oh, uh, not Luke. Joe. Joe is this guy with... We don't know if this is his sister or who this is. Chained to his bed. Eating flies. But definitely waiting for the Dark Master, Count Dracula, to come. The detail on the bricks is sick. Oh, by the way, cholera has spread to England by this time. Late 1800s, they talk a bit about the history of cholera. Here we have uh, her mother being hauled away or... It's kind of confusing. I don't know who this is. Maybe they live in a boarding house. This is somebody else being hauled away and her mother is burnt alive in the boarding house because they don't, they all say no at this point is that cholera spreads through the air. So they basically burn everyone and everything that gets cholera. So that's an underlying part of the story. So now her friend is acting up, Lucy, who was mounted by the lichen the vampire like in earlier and she bites Mina on the shoulder but she is at night infatuated with Mina and in the day her cold self as usual so we don't really know. I mean, she's clearly, there's one scene here. Ah, right here. So look, they're dancing together. We see Mina in the mirror, but we don't see Lucy. So Lucy's definitely transforming, but we don't know exactly yet what she will transform into. There's the nun girl again. Kind of looking forward to seeing her side story. But she is waiting for the Dark Lord. Waiting for some Dracula to come. And emancipate her from her chains. Hakushaku here it says like uh, Waganawa Dracula Hakushaku Hakushaku just means count so the introduction of Count Dracula so we think I 
again, I can't express enough how much I enjoyed the artwork. The detail is fantastic. The captain had tied himself to the ship to steer it. So at night, Lucy and Mina are going out to the graveyard because, of course, Lucy is being wild at night. But Mina yet has has not yet shown any like kind of symptoms from her bite. We don't know what's going to happen yet. Was the bite big enough? Was Lucy far enough along to convert Mina also into a vampire? And where is Dracula? Look at this wildness. I guess this is Dracula reforming after his voyage from Varna to England. Original story by Bram Stoker, not Stroker Mofos, Stoker. And the comic by Shinichi Sakamoto. Great. I really enjoyed this. I can't wait for volume two to come out. I don't know how they're going to pace this. Um, I'm imagining it's probably going to come out in two months. It depends. I mean, each publisher is different. Uh, sometimes they'll release the first two Tonko Bone at the same time. Sometimes they'll stagger them and have one and then one the next month. And then you have to wait a few months for the third. Sometimes it's just like every, they have like a set schedule every two months. Who knows? But as of now, this is Dracula Midnight Children Volume 1. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or what you think. Um, yeah, I've really enjoyed this. I mean, honestly, I really enjoyed reading this and a little bit different from what I'm normally, my weird retro stuff that I'm normally into, but I cannot wait for Volume 2 to come out and I love me some Brom stoker so everyone thank you for your subs likes and shares the subs help extremely just by clicking that little button you help me a ton um i try to get out all the weirdness i can out to the world and by subbing you help me do that also i do have a patreon page where i do flip throughs of stuff that is not fit for sns like uh, Eros and Fetishism. I do a full flip through of this on there and I have probably 15 or 20 videos up there by now of all kinds of wild stuff from my collection of over 1,200 volumes of manga. So thank you everyone and I will be back again soon. Until then, matane.